That's one way. So part two, did you want to keep going, Sam or Jordan? Did you want to come in? Yeah, so, um, so Sam seems to be talking about um, the transformation of, of our, our culture in terms of relating to our somatic health, our emotional health, and um, not allowing, not letting everything just, just imagine, living in a fairy tale world and imagining things are just light and everything's good, and then actually going into the shadow, doing shadow work. And for me, it's like, um, I need to feel really secure, especially if I'm going to open up to my shadow in a, in, in, like in a public way, in a way of relating to other people, I really need to feel safe and secure. And so, in, so Sam's pointing out the direction and I'm saying, well, to go down that direction, I need to be met. I need to, I need to meet my community in a certain way, in a way that makes me feel safe and secure. And then Captain Sweet, has all these these now these communication boards of having very specific niche conversations of how you can select the, like these people are going to be part of this group to have this conversation and so now we have the direction of where to, of what to talk about from what Sam's pointing us to and for me I'm a, so who like what groups are present in my life that I feel safe in in what capacities around that I want to like um, open up to processes and, and transformational um, you know, orders with. And then with Captain Sweet being able to take those groups and put them into a discussion format where we can actually have conversations and work through things together. So I feel it does, I feel like the, the end of the, the last call, it felt like there was kind of a little bit of like, um, how is this all fitting together? But I think it feels it very seamlessly all fits together what, from, from all three of our angles of where we're coming from. I want to like, I want to go where Sam's talking about, but I can't go there until I feel safe in the community. But when I feel safe in the community, then I need a place to have a really well-defined conversation that's structured. And that's what Elijah's off. It's like a, a playground where you can have like very select, um, ideas being worked through in certain in certain groups I mean it it seems to me that each of us has you know again a very unique perspective and each of us wants our particular perspective to be encoded within here but also we're interested in the perspectives of the others and not to have maybe our thing come in at the same time and, and to give each person the right I guess time in the process and that's something which we're working out here I mean this again is the second time for us to be as a threesome and uh, I like it I like having to listen and then to wonder what to add to create whatever is missing from the conversation at least I guess what I feel from my point of view so each of us is bringing in that piece of the the buffet that that you think the, the group wants to eat and maybe maybe you don't want a cucumber salad right now but I <laughs> maybe you want to bring it in and now you're gonna throw some lasagna at me saying no we need to eat this and I think that's funny because I mean for humans you know eating is such a prime part of what we do but talking is also a prime we like to talk we like to eat at the same time and I think Gurdjieff said that there's three types of things that you digest. You digest air, you digest food, and you digest experience. And so one thing I'm seeing in this conversation is, again, it, it doesn't match at all with the normal TV shows, movies, or media that I normally see. Like this is a different conversation, and I like that, and I like hearing both your perspectives because it's it's very enlightening to me to hear them because they are so different from what you normally sort of look at. Mm. So thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. I should get his name. Yeah. Me and quote are the the documentary from this Afri African African guy that has a master's in in uh, expressive arts therapy and dance. He says that uh, 
um, speaking of speaking of eating things, he says that most people have emotional constipation because when we so most most of most of our ways of relating is verbal <laughs> that we rely on, but in other countries and other cultures. Um, and what we're learning, what we're gleaming from these other places is that there's other, there's other systems that want to be recognized. And he says that one way to get rid of emotional constipation or let things flow as in emotion, energy in motion, is that we make an action and we make a sound. If you hurt yourself, if you, put your, if you put your hand on the stove, you're like, ah! If you're happy, you're like, yay! If you're, if you're, if you're sad, you're like, <laughs> um, And why I'm bringing this up is within, within the new matrixes, if we can be allowed to feel comfortable to move and make sounds to let these energies out, then we can be less emotionally um, constipated and also feel it doesn't come out in the wrong way with verbs, with words on somebody. It's like, where is you? Or it's the system, or it's, it's like, ah, I'm feeling like, ah, or like, yay. <laughs> like you don't unload like frustration on people. Is that what you're saying? Or pent up aggression? Yeah. Yeah. Like you're like, I'm feeling this right now. I'm feeling like these, like the fiery bubbles coming up through the, my system. So I'm just going to like shake my body and like, ah! <laughs> mm -hmm. And see, that looks crazy. I'm so fucking, sorry, we're on YouTube, aren't we? I'm so crazy. But this is what our society has done to us that has made us fight each other actually and blame other people is because we're not allowed. Animals, when they get in the fight, they shake afterwards. So within the dance, within the beautiful dance and this music and the systems, I, yeah, I wanna represent all the different emotions by doing like psychosomatic work within, like even right now, like we could do like, little exercise and weird out and let other people know that they can do that too in community and they're not going to be judged mm -hmm. yeah you think facilitation then plays a really critical role in like really understanding who your audience is for instance if you're teaching a class it's like you might have you might know this is the thing that everybody needs you might look at somebody and say you really need to like just move your body but there's a really powerful like uh, skill that's needed from the facilitator to be able to understand how that person needs that. You might know what they need, but you might not know yet how they need it. And it might be, you know, uh, different than, than normal, you know, uh, for instance, like I, I can't do, I can't physically exercise unless my mind is stimulated in a particular way unless I know what this exercise is doing to to bring to in, a, in the holistic view of my life I can't do it just because because I like it's good for me I know it's good for me you know so is eating well so there's a lot of things that are good for me but I don't do it just because it's good for me and I really need to have this special connection to be able to really show up for that in my life. And I think a really powerful facilitator is able to, to really through investigation and, and interviewing the person, being able to really see what drives you, like what makes you come alive? Where is your passion invested? Because I have this thing that I know will help you and you have this doorway and I want to, I want to, 
obviously like, oh, I know this would be helpful, so I want to line this, but I got to find your doorway first. Otherwise, you're not going to see this over here because you can't see through the doorway. But if you can find the doorway, you can actually line up your practice to make that, make a communication, make a bridge, make a, make a, a link heart to heart where it's like, you feel me and I feel heard and I know you know like the intelligence of where I'm coming from. And in that way, we can have a conversation that's really allows me to, to take your gifts and kind of bring them into my world in a way that I can understand how I can use that to. Mm, how I can make that my own, right? Because it needs to be my process. It's not really that you're doing somebody else's process when you adopt it, it becomes your process. So it's got to feel like your signature. It always is your signature. Jordan and I were at a, a, an open mic. No one was in the room. And there was this one young man and Remember that we brought him up to the mic and he'd never gone on the mic before. There's no one in the room. There's just me and Jordan. And he would just stand in front of that mic and he couldn't speak. He couldn't say anything. And to me, he was at that, the end of the spectrum of probably he had never spoken his truth. He had never been able to speak in front of a group. He had never, whatever it was, is he was blocked. And I think what Jordan is bringing up in, in regards to what you're bringing, like to me, we all want to facilitate humans to experience a deeper sense of themselves, uh, more connection with the group, um, more, let's say, enlightened life in a sense. And we may or may not be experiencing it ourselves. Maybe it's something we've never experienced and we know where we think it should be happening, but it hasn't, or maybe we have been able to have it occur a few times and, and saw that wow, things could be so much better, so much different. We just did that. But, but when I saw him in that moment, I remember, you know, me at that age was probably the same. There was some point in my life where I didn't want to speak in front of anyone and nobody could get me to speak in front of anyone. And now I feel like I can. And now I feel I can maybe help help people to do so. But I thought like, here's Jordan and I, and we're, we're both pretty good at, I think, making people feel comfortable and here's an empty room and here's this man. And yet he still could not speak. And it just, I guess it touched me in a certain way of, of, you know, what type of educational either curriculum or context or framing to assist people to speak their truth. And um, I don't know, I'm just throwing that in. Yeah, yeah really beautiful. Oh, I, I was bringing in like, a little weirdo kind of little tidbit of an example. <laughs> Absolutely. There's a huge process in relation to um, somatic psychology and, and working with people one-on-one -on -one or in group settings. Like some people feel more comfortable um, on the outside of a group looking in. And some people feel like really comfortable to be tight and close. And some people feel really comfortable to be on one-on-one -on -one space. And there's all these dynamics um, that, that you inquire about over time. And they, like the, one of the biggest things is that people, people have all these different ways of feeling safe. <laughs> And there are all these different practices for which to inquire about to make people feel safe. Personally, personally, throughout my life, um, my, my stepmother would always be like, turn it down, just down, down. And so when I don't feel heard and don't feel included, I, I think I get like, I used to, I used to like really be a freaking debater, man. Just sociology, like, just like, how can I prove myself in my intelligence to prove my worth 
which is safety to me. Mm. And now it's trying to come to more of an even balance, but it percolates and it comes up when I don't feel like seen or I'm being told that I'm too much. As a woman, my energy is too much. And I'm just like, I have, I wondered, I have lots of things to share with you and I'm weird and different and am I making you feel demasculated? <laughs> so uh, all I can speak to is from, from uh, my journey and, and what I'm working with in dance movement therapy is like, yeah, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot, a lot to it in relation, bringing it back more to the conversation of systems. Cause we're talking about, we're talking about society and we're talking about groups in this new, this new society we want to, we want to um, be harmonious in. So there's room for the fiery people. There's room for the soft spoken. There's room for the go-getters and to find that matrix of including the psychology aspects within it is uh, exciting and, and also <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> Yeah, I'm feeling a lot, feeling a lot, up and down, but we're working it out. We're coming to the end of, uh, I think of this hour. Um, I'm just wondering if Jordan, you want to give it a finale? Mm -hmm. I think at this point um, in time in our communities and our groups and our families, we just find people that we find the people we really want to be accountable. We want to share accountability with share bonds to, to say, I'm going to show up for you and have you show up for me and, and find those relationships to, to count on and have, and find strength in. Um, and then just, really get clear spend time getting clear what do you want to create like what are what are like three things that you want to like your life to be about where do you want to draw your energy like what turns you on what what drives you and get really take this time to while everything's stopped everything's like you know we're taking a break from normal pace reality right now take this time to really focus and, and have conversations and get clear. What do you want to create? What do you want your life to be about? Who do you want to be? And, um, and then, and then bring that into the community, bring that into the people that you want to create with and just have conversations and share that, share that, um, like questioning of like, what do you want to create in your life? Like what, or what are you afraid of? And just start, taking this time to just really resting into the, the waters of our community and finding our place within our dreams and within what really makes us feel whole and alive. Sam? Oh, man! Look at this little toy. Ooh. This is like our energy system, all chakras. See? Just got it from a friend. I think if we had a little button somewhere <laughs> that you could press and go buy a squiggly thing on the arm. <laughs> <laughs> this whole thing was like a, a sales thing for that. Um, that's, yeah. I, I appreciate the diversity and the vulnerability and the coming together in patience and trust and incorporating all the, all the energies together. Thanks for um, setting us up, Captain Sweep.
I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I want to appreciate both of you that uh, I find like as we watch ourselves and as, as we hear others, it, it, it sort of it's define. It's like sonar that's kind of defining ourselves, where we're sort of saying something. The information goes out. We see how it lands. We see what the other person says, and there's a. I think about these other teams and these other groups and how this is actually it, you know, independent of the tool, like this is a tool where we're getting together to talk, which is probably the most important thing. I mean, we can have cars, we can define, we can do whatever we want, but we're building a little bit more trust. We're building a little bit more accountability. We are actually realizing the values that are the core of what is going to bring a team together. And so this is just another step, a small step in the right direction. And if anyone's watching, I just want to thank you for watching this. And we're just, you know, we have no sort of script. We didn't really come up with much of an agenda, but we're just speaking from the heart or maybe just the mind. And uh, we're hoping at some point that this is going to help other people to learn about whatever it is that we want to share with you. And so thank you for watching us. And until next week, this is Captain Sweep and uh, Jordan and Samantha, and much love to you all. Thanks, Yori. <laughs> Thank you, guys.